Hey kids, we still got King Dragon figures from U2 is available for pre-order. Uh, we've sold about 70%, I'd say, so there's still some left. Um, and this is uh, a limited edition thing, not by my choice, that's how u twos works. Uh, once these are sold out, uh, these, will not, these will not be made again. So if you want one, please pre-order using the link below. Uh, I'm, I'm constantly making these reminders for you guys because I guarantee you once they are closed or sell out, people will ask me, hey, can I pre-order the thing? Hey, can you make one of these? Hey, when are you making King Dragon? When are you selling this? Now. So <laughs> again, once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, so go check out the link below if you would like one. Uh, they are running out. Okay, bye. Hello, it is uh, time for a q and A. I'm here with my friend Jay. Hello. Uh, if you don't know who Jay is, uh, we have a Let's Play channel, Pros and He Plays Games. There's a link down there. You can watch our stuff down there. Also, he is a friend of mine and also my editor and assistant and overall uh, punching bag. Uh, and we are going to do a QA. and uh, We asked for questions on Twitter and we chose, you chose 10, right? Mm -hmm. 10 to ask each other. What is the most fun part about writing slash storyboard writing for you? Do you do storyboards or more so just write, just like writing. writing? Most writers would uh, say I'm a sociopath for this is I actually like the actual act of writing. Mm. And like clicky clacking, I have a really loud keyboard because of it. Once you get past the outline, things, mm -hmm. right? Like you have the outline and then you know exactly what you need to write and you just need to fill in the details. Like I just like going for it. And also reaching a juicy part of the outline, like a specific scene that mm. uh, I've been wanting to write or it's been saying in the back of my mind and just going for it and landing that, you know, that that perfect dialogue that excited you about it. So, um, so yeah. for those people, when you, whenever you see writers who are like, oh, I hate writing, you're just like, can't relate, fucking love writing. Basically, yeah. Got it. Well, first off, why don't you plug your shit? You've got a... Uh... Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm a writer. I've done, uh, I've written for, to an extent for film, television, and comics. I have my own graphic novel, Bounty Light, which you can find below. Yeah, there'll be a link so... down there. Yeah. <laughs> I've sold animated pitches to Nickelodeon and Lego, um, and um, a couple of other things that I can't talk about right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's, that's what I do, so. Uh, and if you're looking for a writer, hire him. Who approached who to create Cozy D Plays Games? Mm, uh, that was me. I asked him, wanted to make a new Let's Play channel, and I was like, you know, I thought about throughout all my friends who would be a fun dynamic with, and I thought this guy would be a very entertaining co-host, and I was right. Uh, I think uh, what we put out has been uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I needed someone that I think what works with us is that we have a lot of the same interests. Mm -hmm. Also, it's fun to uh, make fun of him, uh, and he also takes it well. Uh, and yeah, I mean, he's just also just funny as well. So I think <laughs> it's been a good ride so far. So he was my first choice for a co-host, and I was like, you want to do it? And he was like, sure, and it worked out. Yeah. I don't know if you have an answer to this. What's your craziest memory with me? I don't know about crazy, mm -hmm. but a memory that I do that makes me laugh yeah. um, is when we went to uh, a Korean spa together with a couple of friends. Okay. I think, I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I love the steam room. Mm -hmm. I love just sitting in there and just <laughs> thinking about whatever and sure. just letting myself sweat and the steam just cover me. Yeah. And like, you know, and I'm sure, like, at one point, when you're going to a spot with a group of friends, you want to check out what your other friends are doing. Yeah. And, you know, uh, like, like our friend Steve, like, walked in a little bit. Dave yeah. was there for a bit. Uh, and then, uh, and then you come in, and, like, the way you, like, strutted in, like, you were, like, so confident. Like, hell yeah, what's up? Like, kind of, like, just, like, keeping it cool. Sure. And then you take a seat next to me. And you immediately start starting back out. Like it was like not even a second. It was the funniest thing. You know, I what I did was I went in there. I was like, oh, a steam room. Okay, let's check it out. And I sit in there. I'm like, I don't like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. This is not comfortable at all. Like I would much rather be in. There's like the hot water bath. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. But the steam room, I'm just like. I just feel sweaty. I just feel sweaty and, I'm, and like, I, I'm a sweaty guy anyway, so I'm like, mm -hmm. there's nothing here for me. Gotcha. And so listen, I'm not someone who's like, I gotta stay here and pretend like I like it. I'm like, mm -mm, no, I don't like this at all. I just immediately left.
but I do remember that that was very funny. Is your life on a trajectory you expected it to be? Absolutely not. Uh, in a good way. Uh, I definitely would not have predicted that any of what I'm doing now would ever have happened. It's what I wanted, but it wasn't what I was expecting because I thought that voiceover would be, and it was, but like almost impossible to get into and so hard. And it is, and it, it's still a struggle here and there, but mm -hmm. I think I've managed to accomplish a lot more than I could have dreamed of. And then the YouTube stuff, I remember there was a point where I thought 100,000 subscribers would be impossible. So to be at this point is very surreal. So I am very thankful mm -hmm. for where I'm at, but it's all very surreal to me. I definitely don't take it for granted. Did you ever create a character you really liked, but it didn't make it into a work of yours? And if so, what are they like? Is there a character you have to scrap? Yeah, all the time. This was actually for uh, my college thesis film, mm -hmm. um, where it was essentially about what if Video games and nerd shit was like the popular norm, and like being an athlete was like you gotta you gotta keep that secret. Uh, making fun of yeah, yeah yeah yeah. And there was a character. The main character was like he secretly wants to play tennis, but he comes from like a video game champion family, and he's like I gotta keep it to myself. Mm. And he sees like this athlete, this football player that I named mean, this this character Chad. I just uh -huh. named him Chad. No. And Chad would walk up to like he's seen the hallway. Uh, he, he, Chad's like hitting on someone. This person, and there was kind of like. <laughs> With a jock like you? No. Yeah. And it was like, he was like a, a C story character, but throughout like seeing the main character come out with his whole like, I want to play like tennis because that's what I play uh -huh, and yeah. everything. Like Chad got the courage of like, yeah, you know what? I should maybe get into video games and like, you know, go and also show up how cool like football is or whatever. Uh -huh. And it was like, and it was like a small little background story, but yeah, no, I just love this idea of like this jock who just gets totally denied yeah. and then he's just like trying to come out of his comfort zone and mm. be himself to, to, to stand out. Who would play Chad in the live action version of, of Who of would this? play Chad in yeah. the live action version? Is it Channing Tatum? You know what? Yeah, Channing Tatum. Yeah, Channing Tatum, if you're watching this, I love, I love Channing we got, Tatum. You, you're, you're, you've this got the part. This character doesn't exist. The film was, it was a college film. It was God. Listen, but Channing Tatum, you've got the part if, oh you're, if you're watching. <laughs> Do you have a favorite character you made up for your skits? Favorite character? Mm -hmm. Gotta go with like classic Lysander Roth, right? I think mm -hmm. the voice is really stupid. I think mm -hmm. uh, usually he gets to say the dumbest things like all the time. I don't I, I it, it's hard for me. I don't Do you have one of mine that you like? I don't know, yours is like the Time Wizard? Or the guy being but tormented by the Time Wizard? We've never seen the Time that's true, Wizard that's true. on screen. Who, who, is, who yeah, would your favorite I'm just be? giving you ideas, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah probably Lysandra. Yeah, I think Lysandra is just the, just the... I mean, the machinations are... Yeah. They, yeah, like, it's just... It just they lay undetected for years, it's yeah. classic. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the one I enjoy the most. Which of my cats is your favorite? Would that cat agree? Interesting. Um, probably... I think Effie is his sweetheart. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, but... The thing is, Effie and I haven't really interacted, so she probably wouldn't think the same. Yeah. Sophie and I have interacted a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie has attacked him. Sophie screams at him. Yeah. Uh, I suspect it might no, because Effie doesn't. Effie just doesn't, doesn't really do that to anybody. Maybe Sophie just smells Munji on you and is like, "You're just a big cat." But the thing is, that wasn't an issue before. Then I think Sophie just wants to kick. Yeah, I think ass. that's what it is. I think Sophie. Sophie, can, Sophie sees in you what I see in you, and it's a walking punching bag. Oh. Okay. So she's like, "I got to, I got to go for it." Right. Okay. And so Sophie. Following, cats imitate the owners. So you know, I think makes sense. I, so I raised her right. Mm. I'm, I'm proud of you, Sophie. <laughs> what separates professional level voice acting from an amateur? I think that may be an interesting... Mm, okay. I mean, it's really just, besides the obvious, you're getting paid for it, but mm -hmm. like, I think to get to that level of professional, it, there's a level of not just basic skill, you know, like in terms of you can't be like stumbling over stuff, you know, enunciation, mm -hmm. but uh, I think once you get to a level of confidence where you can walk into a, into a booth mm -hmm. um, and Feel well, I don't know, because different actors deal with it differently. I know some actors get nervous a lot. I don't, but that's because I've been doing it for a long time. So I guess the best way to put it is professional voice acting is when you've polished your skills to a level where you, when once presented with an opportunity, you can do the job and not botch it. Because there have definitely been stories I've heard where people 
weren't ready for opportunities and kind of like faltered, right? Like mm -hmm. they, they, they stumbled at the wrong moment because they were not ready at that moment. I see, I see. And I think that's what separates the pros from the amateurs is mm -hmm. when, uh, when presented with the opportunity, uh, you can nail it. Right, um, right. That's when I guess you're ready. And to get to that point, you know, you gotta develop the experience and, you know, or classes or whatever you need to get to that sure, point. Sure, sure, sure. Because I consider, you know, you know, like indie games, that's professional voice acting, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're getting paid to do, if someone is paying you and you are doing a good enough job to earn that, that is professional voice acting. Mm -hmm. But to get to that point, you gotta build up the skills and confidence to get there. Gotcha. Who's your favorite One Piece character that isn't Luffy? Like, among the Straw Hats? Let's say, yeah, go with that first. I mean, Nami. Nami, I knew that. Yeah, I love Nami. Non-Straw Hat. Buggy. Mm. Buggy the Clown. That's a good choice. Yeah. Okay. I love that king. Yeah. If you were to cast Jay for a voice actor role, what type would he suit the most? I think I know this, but... Interesting. Couple answers. One, you are a protagonist. <laughs> you are a walking anime protagonist. Like, everyone who watches the channel, the Let's Play channel is like, Oh my god, protagonist energy. Like, I have never related to a protagonist in an anime video game, how they react to things. And then when I met you, I'm like, oh, this is what that person is like. To be like, oh, whoa, oh, oh my god, whoa. Uh, it's surprising. It's surprising, they're surprising. So I think you have that natural energy mm -hmm. where I think you would be good for that. It would either be like protagonist or I kind of like how you voice absolute creeps like Corey Kiyo from our Danganronpa. Oh, so yeah. maybe something like that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I will say like as um, uh, someone, I know you don't have any interest in voiceover, or do you? No. No, you don't have any interest. I will say you 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 have a you have a knack for it. Like I think I think you're actually quite quite good. Obviously, you know, if you actually really dedicated, and then I think you could get polished to like a professional level. But I think instinctually, yeah. when we do the Let's Plays and you read dialogue, I'm like, no, you have a very good understanding of like mm. how emotions should be, yeah. uh, no, that's, should go. No, I, I appreciate it. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's just yeah. fun. For me, it's fun to like, I love table reads when we're, when we're going over a script together. So I like putting my all into something. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have no interest in it because I don't want to reallocate all my skill points to a new skill. If you were a, <laughs> if you were a creator of a show, would you cast yourself in a part? No. Not even a minor part? Not even a cameo? I don't know. I, mm. I don't know. Okay. You're like, no thanks. I, it's more so just like, there are better people out there, mm. you know? People more deserving, so like, why not? No. So. I think that's totally fair. All right. If you were a furry, what kind of furry would you be? Do you have a persona? I don't have an official persona, but I feel like I'd be a bird. Of course. A friend of mine drew me as a bird before. I mean, a jay. Uh, well, not in this, uh, yeah, that's true. I think I feel like I'd love to either be a rose finch because pink. Don't know what that is. Um, it's like a small bird. It's like oh, okay, yeah. And then, uh, or a really dumb flamingo. <laughs> and I say dumb because flamingos are tall and lanky, but yeah. it should all. But that's like flamingos are graceful. That's like what we see. And I don't. I, I, <laughs> I grace is of uh, is is an adjective seldom used to describe me. Mm. I feel like. Are there any board games you want to play on camp? Interesting. Yeah. I think if I had the setup, I would. It'd be fun to do board game streams. I think the easy answers are some. I'm looking. We're literally looking at my board game shelf over here. Sure. Party games like Secret Hitler are really easy. Times Up, I think, would be hilarious to do. Um, I mean, I've done. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done stuff on board game arena, but we're talking like on camera. Yeah. Even like Perudo, like Liars Dice, would be a lot of fun. Just anything that's like a really fun sort of party game. That's I think the. That yeah. stuff to watch. That'd be cool to have a multicam set to look at people's faces yeah. too. The dream would be if I had like a camera crew that like had multiple cameras and like, I don't know, just like, yeah, just reaction shots or something. Yeah, like that. I think yeah, that'd yeah. be super fun, but cool. uh, yeah, something like that I think would be cool. What got you to start dyeing your hair? When did you start and what got you to do it? I, st I mean, when, when I was in the fourth grade, my mom uh, had bleached, uh, had me bleach my hair once. Um, okay. And then it was, considered too dynamic, I guess, mm, so. By your school or your mom or you or? Both. Okay, so, so they were like, no, we can't do that. Yeah, and okay. but I start, uh, I actually bleached my hair again my freshman year of college. A friend had ex extra bleach powder. Mm. I was like, do you want, do you want to just bleach your hair? I was like, sure. Yeah. And it was not good, it didn't look good. Sure. But, and I remember my mom was gonna pick me up 
uh, from my dorm to go back home for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And she's talking, she's talking on her phone, like in the car, she's like, and I'm like waving, and I'm like, oh, it's me, it's me. And she looks and just goes, <laughs> and she just starts driving away. I had to like, run down the street to go get her. <laughs> she was really mad at me. Uh, and then, but since then, I just kept, I, that's when I kept trying to push her, especially when I started getting tattoos. And like, I was like, I just kept doing that. And <laughs> she was like, like Fine. Yeah, she's she's getting more and more mad, but now she's like used to it. Ever since then, like every couple months and throughout college, I just dye my hair a different color. Mm. I asked uh, one of my best friends in college, I was like, what color should I do? He, he would just say whatever color, like cool, doing that next, you know? Mm. I would go to whenever there's like a big school event um, because of college, they would know that like, people recognize me as like, oh, that guy always changes his hair color. Or mm, okay. So, yeah. you know, it's like a, a big, big video game tournament or a big like community thing and people would just vote on my hair color, you know? Funny. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's What's funny. the worst color on you? The worst that you tried? color? Um, You're like, mm, this one doesn't work. There was a time I was tr I was rushing and, uh, rushing like my hair job. Yeah. And, uh, cause I used to do it myself a lot. And yeah. now I just don't do, I don't, I don't feel like doing it myself anymore. Mm. But, uh, I, I, I mixed colors wrong and it came out to a weird green. Mm. It looked like shit. Yeah. That it's, was that sounds was like bad. some but, vomit. Okay. But in terms of natural colors, I don't know. I think they all look good. On <laughs> <laughs> this <So>. guy. <laughs> I might have told you this, but have you ever shaved your head? Yeah. You know I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I shaved my head uh, for cancer awareness at school on impulse. And uh, funny enough, you know, because your your story reminded me of. Yeah. I walk out. My mom comes to pick me up, and she goes. What? <laughs> <laughs> but she was fine with it. I, was, I mean, it was just funny. And it, it, yeah. I think it, it's fun to shave. I think everyone should shave their head Dude, at least it once. it feels so good. Yeah, I've done it twice now. I, uh, and it's uh, it feels really good I, every time. I did it because my hair started melting from bleaching it too much. Oh, okay. So yeah. I was like, I need my hair to regrow mm. and like stronger. And when I when I shaved my head and played tennis, I was like the most aerodynamic in my life. You're I, like I'm the most efficient. I, I kid you not. Yeah. Like, dude, one hair strand in my eye, I'm like, I'm ruined. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It yeah. just gets in the way. I get distracted. So, mm, like a jet. Got it. <laughs> if you could do another like wicked experience slash luxury food tasting video, what kind of food would you try? So I did the caviar one. It's the only one I've done that's like super fancy. I mean, if I can choose, let's see. There's like there's like. A5 Wagyu, right? Mm -hmm. There's, um, you know, truffles, there's mm -hmm. foie gras. If I had my choice, is all, wa all Wagyu, all delicious, is kind of the same. It's just mm -hmm. fatty and delicious, right. right? So I think I'd pick either different types of foie gras, because mm -hmm. I, I love foie gras, or maybe different types of like premium seafood. Like if I could like, and I invite you uh, to, to join me. No, uh, he doesn't like seafood. For, oh, there's a whole story, it, blah, 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 it's boring. Uh, <laughs> maybe like premium seafood, I think that'd be kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would want to try stuff that I nor don't normally get to, to try, so. so. What separates professional level writing from amateur writing? Ha, 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 interesting. Well, most people would know, even when I critique shows and movies too, that I always, and very forgiving sure. of things. Mm -hmm. um, so, in a sense, like, not it is not meant to be a non-answer. Yeah. But, like, I do respect every concept, every conceit or idea, like to some degree. Yeah. Um, I, I I feel like if I want to get nitty gritty, an amateur thing is like. I'm speaking speaking specifically in screenplays, like how you're formatting your script. And okay. Like, or, you know, I, I know a lot of people can't afford certain programs, like Final Draft or whatever. But when I see a script that's like clearly typed in Google or Microsoft Word, I'm kind of like, mm. uh, like I'm already like kind of like Ugh, at it. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Because again, it just it's it, there's a reason why things things are formatted in certain ways. Sure. Create it easier. I would also say a lack of thought about their characters. Okay. You know. Using and this is more of a, like a like an artistic explanation, but using your character as a tool to forward the story rather than the story moving forward because of your character mm -hmm. that can happen a lot, mm -hmm. even in even in finished like products you'd see on TV. Sure, um, but I feel like just that awareness of like why is your character doing this and um, how does it affect the story in the mm -hmm. world and the other characters around them is like a really big indicator uh, of, I guess, you know, good storytelling and, mm. and 
not so well crafted storytelling. Gotcha. What is a dish you would recommend for someone who wants to extend their palate? I think I would say the first food that comes to mind would be, funnily enough, because you can't eat seafood, sushi. I think sushi is one where a lot of, like, especially American palates are used to, like, fatty and strong in your face flavor being the norm, right? Mm -hmm. But with sushi, um, you get a lot of variety of flavors, a lot of subtle flavors where you can go, oh, like, you know, the the richness of say like raw salmon is different from like a cheeseburger, right? Like that's right. like very salty, like in your face. And salmon, it's like, you have to focus more. There's ikura, which gives you more salty flavors. There's you know, shrimp and the egg, they give you sweeter notes. You can't just gobble down sushi, like, mm. I mean, you can, but to enjoy it, the best way is just like each bite, like really taking your time to enjoy and focus on stuff. So that that's one that comes to mind for me of like, if, you, if you've if never had good sushi, even, and even if you're like scared of it or whatever, I would say, yeah, that would be a good place to start. Mm. And then just, and then otherwise just trying everything, you know? Try everything once. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you do like it, you discover something new. That's what I always tell people, mm -hmm. so. If you could bang an anime slash manga character, who or what would it be? I don't know. What? You never wanted to fuck No, it's, I'm not saying that, but like, <laughs> like, I don't even, number one, like. That's be number one, just right now. Hey, this character is here, and it's consensual, it's time, they want to fuck. And you're like, yeah, time to fuck. Wait, 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 like video game or like? Anime manga was oh, the question. anime manga was the question. Because I was going to say Zhang Wei from Kenshin, but... <laughs> okay. Dude, I love him, I don't know why. Okay, um, Zhang Li, sure. But not video game. Yeah, yeah. Do anime adaptations of games count? What are you... What is your answer? I was thinking uh, Takemi from Persona 5. Takemi. Oh, the oh, doctor. The doctor. That's a valid answer, but how about one that's not an adaptation? Not an adaptation. For male, uh... Taki Sensei from Sound Euphonium. Hell yeah. Yeah. For uh, a woman, Mirko from My Hero Academia. The bunny girl? Yes. Got it. Okay. I don't know enough about her. I mean, she's hot, but her, I don't know. Okay. Her thighs are very powerful. Mm. Three things that make a perfect anime. Mm. First and foremost, characters. I'm saying this because I'm watching one right now. <laughs> <laughs> that charity voted for me to watch called Planet With. That I'm like, I don't give a shit about these characters at all. I need to care about your characters or at least be interested in what your characters' motivations are, okay? Like, one or the other, both is great. But if it's, if, if you, I don't care what world you've built or whatever that they're doing, if I don't care or I'm not interested in the characters, that, that's number one. Two, yeah. pacing. Pacing, uh, so much that, that kills anime is, uh, is not animation quality, it's pacing. Like even the most beautifully animated anime, if they are clearly stretching it for time or they just are not, or the opposite, where they rush through shit. It's like, and I'm like, I don't, you're, I can't get, like, spend any time with these characters, right? That's a huge problem. So that's too good pacing. And three, animation doesn't hurt if it's really nice, but that's not a prerequisite. I'd say I love a good anime opening, but that's also not a prerequisite. Sticking the landing, just because a lot of anime can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, it's, it's hard to find a show that ends as strongly as it starts. So if we're talking about like, because there's a lot of great anime, but some an some of them pfft, at the end, right? Like a perfect anime for me is, I love the characters, it's paced perfectly, and hey, start to finish, mm. they stick it. So I, I would say that's my answer. On that note, what are three things that make the perfect anime for you? It's, it's a bummer, because like, I, I, I agree with you. Okay, sure, I agree sure. With you. Yeah. Because um, characters are super important. They can yeah. carry through even the most bullshit plot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I will say, this is a, this is more abstract. But for number two, it knows what it is. Like it, if for example, like a confidence. It, it it's like there are battle shonens that try too hard, mm. and there are battle shonens that just are 
batshit bonkers, but it knows it and it's having fun. Mm, awareness. Yeah, yeah it has yeah, an yeah, awareness yeah. of like what it's trying to do, who it's catering for, and what it's about. You I know? see. I see. You look at um, not about you, but like Doro Hodoro. That's just kind of mm. like people are like, oh, it's just gory, but also like. It's all about being raw, metal as hell, yeah. and having the hottest characters around. And fun. Yes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. very fun. Mm, so mm, okay. I, I think that's really important and because that, that extends to style and aesthetic mm. and that come that helps to bring it all together. Okay, okay. Um, and for a third thing, um, that isn't like what we already said, what either of us said. Mm -hmm. Be nice to have good figures for it. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. All my favorite shit never gets figures. <sighs> Like, I wish I had some basic ass taste. Dude, what is it like to be a, a fate stay night fan to well, get every- like, Well, there's like fate stay night, but okay. But like, well, well, like, like a sword art. No, because I, I, like for me, I'm like, I'm not I'm not crazy into fate. I, I liked fate zero, but like, they have a figure for they everybody. Do, they do, For yeah. everybody, it's yeah. insane. Some of you some of you eat real well. Yeah. <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm like, I'm starving over here. I want just one, just one figure, <laughs> please. Is there one thing you've always wanted to know about Jay? No, because you're pretty open about a lot of things. Maybe to a fault. Uh... <laughs> Should I even say this? Does Jay have like, like a, like a secret, like, like fetish or kink or something like that? Like, I'm like, that, that oh. would, yeah. But that, yeah, I'm but, super into, and even that I like don't care. You know that, what I mean? That's, that's not my business. Also like, like, that's like personal shit. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Like anything yeah, I can yeah. think of, I'm like, personal stuff, you know? Yeah, it's like it's yeah. stuff like, I don't really, I'm not like, oh yeah, I really want to know. One thing I want to know about Jay is I want to experience, I want to know what it's like to hear Jay scream on the Tower of Terror at Disneyland. Uh, that's what I want to know. Uh, I There's a photo, uh, you have it, right? Yeah, it's gonna be right, right there. Right there. Uh, I want to hear what that sounds like. That would bring me so much joy so we should go no we should do like a charity milestone and uh and if, if it fits hits i get to record you doing it <laughs> oh my god yeah great idea let's do it right guys if listen if you if you would donate to charity to make him ride that ride and watch the reaction please comment saying so and uh, maybe we'll do it in the future uh with that said this was a q a uh looking forward to the tower of terror with you jay uh where can people find you uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Jay Perry. I'll just put it right there. Okay. And then you could also get my book, Bounty Light, also there. And Prosody Plays Games is our Let's Play channel. It's also down there. there. All right. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. See ya.